That is a thing of beauty. Today's video is sponsored by Earth Breeze. Hi, flower friends. I'm in the garage planting today with me, <laughs> Grandpa. I went and picked Grandpa up, and we're doing ranunculus today, and we're going to start a couple of other seeds. Um, Grandpa usually is in here helping with the seeds, but this is the first time that he's helping out with the ranunculus. And what do you think? It's a little bit easier than the, well, than the I, seeds? I, I think they're the ugliest things I've ever seen. <laughs> you would never guess that they're a seed. They are. They're a corm, like a bulb corm-like thing. But if she likes them, they got to be good. Hold on. Let me remind him what ranunculus looked like when they're blooming here. I got my cal one of my calendars is right here. Oh, my God. <laughs> From ugly to beautiful. Right? Oh, my God. Yeah, they're so good. They're absolutely beautiful. I'm excited about it. All right, so he's got the method down. I'm going to start some over here. This is the second round of ranunculus that I've started. Um, and I think they're the final round. This is the second and final round of ranunculus. Ooh, and you have some pumpkin seeds yeah. for sustenance. Yep. Kind of workspaces, um, share it with Brad. So there's silicone spray on the table. There are truck parts, there's oil, there's tractors, everything. So this is a, a communal garage. We all use it and uh, it's evidence in the way that it has things, but it works. It's a great space. I love it. These have been soaking in net bags. Basically, these are bags that tulip varieties come in. These have been soaking for about three hours this morning. Usually do four to six hours, but uh, this is just what we have today. The corms have about doubled in size from when I placed them in the netting with the good soaking, and now they're ready to plant. I just have a 10-20 tray, just basically a flat tray, and that is where I place them. I place them pretty close together, and this is a method that I've been doing a couple years now, and I find that this is a little bit better for the plants versus the actual like a 72 plug tray or something because the roots don't tend to, and they don't get root bound. They are able to spread throughout and they're much easier to take apart when it's time to put them in the ground. Good placement. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. All right. Like yep. I'm going to take it downstairs. What are you most excited about at the nursery to see grow there? Um, I'll, I'll be truthful with you. I, when you, when you're there watching and, and you're seeing what you're putting in and within a week or two, you've got flowers coming up. I get excited about everything. Little cute babies. They're so little. Mm -hmm. Got room in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. and better last grow, one. better grow. We are going to start the coleus. Coleus. Bum, 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 bum. You plant them? Is it coleus enough? Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're just going to sprinkle them in here. I've already labeled the tray. Um, because these are little seeds, like real little. And this is how I started mm -hmm. them last year. So you just open it up and sprinkle them on. Ooh, that's a new method. I think there's a couple, there's some stuck on the tape on the inside, right here at the top. Oh, maybe that's just dirt from your finger. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I didn't even see them come out. Oh, they all came out. I saw them. Right. Cool. I just got to sprinkle those with a little bit of water and cover them up and they're done. If the ocean was liquor and I was a duck, why well, I'd swim to the bottom and never come up. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we have here? Purple Jean. I'm excited about that one. All right, that I'm one's gonna, a dark purple flower. I'll make sure I plant them right. You better too. do it right. <laughs> I am excited for tomatoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my, my. That's that stuff now. Are you talking about? long hot peppers oh yeah and now more about the sponsor of today's video it's earth breeze more than 700 million laundry detergent jugs end up in landfills and oceans every single year 
EarthBreeze takes the plastic out of doing laundry. The packaging is compact, biodegradable, and plastic free. Their powerful eco sheets look like dryer sheets, but they're not. It's detergent that dissolves 100% in hot or cold water and can be used in any type of machine. It couldn't be easier. No measuring, just toss them in. Doing a small load? No problem, just use half a sheet. With EarthBreeze, their flexible subscription plans can be adjusted, paused, or canceled at any time without penalty. For every pack sold, EarthBreeze donates 10 loads to charity. Go to earthbreeze.com slash Flower Hill Farm to get started with 40% off. That's earthbreeze.com slash Flower Hill Farm for 40% off your subscription. Thanks to EarthBreeze for keeping me smelling pretty and for sponsoring this video. It's a couple days later and I brought grandpa home. He had a really good time. Thank you guys for all the well wishes for my grandfather. He was sick over the holidays, but he is getting better every single day. So I'm glad he was able to help me out. I do plan on picking him up again about once a week for him to help me with things like this. Things that he can do that don't take all day long, these projects like this. Starting seeds is perfect. All right, so we did end up starting some more stock seeds, a bunch of packets that I picked up from Baker Creek. I did order quite a few more, guys. Remember I said I was gonna order all the ones that were in the catalog? I did, and they have new packaging. Did you guys see they, they have new packaging with a little smile, you've got seeds, happy growing. Anyway, lots more stock. I've got some pale yellow ones, vintage brown, the spray antique pink. This one's gorgeous, is it gonna focus? This one reminds me of the Rainbow Quartet, but obviously this one, oh. Um, this says it does produce side branches. Spray Antique Pink. That's very curious because it looks surprisingly like Rainbow Quartet. And it says it does produce side branches. That'll be interesting to see. And then some nasturtium, some raspberry colored stock, a bunch of stock. So Grandpa and I started all of those. And guess what else is germinating? The rainbow stock seeds that I collected from inside the hoop house a few weeks ago. I started them probably about 10 days ago and we have life, signs of life. I don't know if they're gonna be true to the mother plant, the actual rainbow quartet stock, but this is gonna be a pretty cool experiment to see. And also thank you, I did have a couple of viewers who sent me rainbow stock seeds that they found. Everyone was commenting, hey, I found them on this website and this website and this website, and a couple of you guys actually sent me the seeds, so thank you so much, that's awesome. Here are all the little rainbow quartet stock babies. I think it's about 100% germination. I didn't start all of the seeds. I only started probably 30 of them. And as you can see, there are a ton. And here's the date on them. I put rainbow stock 123. This is a takeout container. Someone last year actually sent me, oh, about 100 of them in a box. They are the perfect germination chambers for when you're starting little seeds like this, little amounts. They're similar to the stock, like the channel trays that I use, but this for me is a little bit easier because it's got its own little germination chamber. I can label the side. I love using these and you can just save them from after you get takeout. They are the perfect little seed starting kits. Now I wanna go over how I start my ranunculus and my anemone in a little bit more detail, just in case you guys have missed a couple of other videos where I did it. I do start my corms in a 1020, like a, a tray flat, that's all it is. It's just one of the bottom trays. I fill the little bit of soil, probably an inch, inch and a half on the bottom, and then I place the corms the way that they're supposed to go. The legs dangle down and then the little, it's almost like a tooth most of the time on the anemone. They face down and then I do, Obviously those have been soaked for several hours. I always soak my corms. And then after I plant them the way that they're supposed to be planted with the little legs down, I do cover it with about half inch to an inch of soil. And then I put it in a dark place. Before I put it in that dark place though, I do sprinkle a little bit of water over the top of that tray. And not a ton though. You don't want the soil to be sopping wet. The corms, remember, were just soaked. So any moisture that they need, they're gonna hold on to for several days. So you don't need to completely saturate the soil. I put it in a dark spot, which is basically on the shelves downstairs in the grow room, and I just don't turn the lights on. You can check for signs of life, but usually between seven and 10 days, you will see a little bit of growth. If you don't see growth on the top, it might be growing underneath and you just don't know it yet. Sometimes I like to take one of the corms and give it a little tug. <laughs> and if it's a little bit hard to move, then you know the roots are being produced underneath that and it's holding it in place. 
I like to start my corms three to four weeks before I plant them outside, but I've held them in trays longer. Last year, I had some in trays for seven to eight weeks because I didn't have my hoop house ready, and they ended up being just fine. And I think the method that I use to start them, it helps them to sit longer in the trays because they don't get root bound. They have the ability for their roots to spread out all over the tray. And when you tear them apart, when you're ready to transplant them, the roots aren't all twisted up into a little chunk of roots. They really are like a beautiful lacy wisp of roots ready to be transplanted wherever you put it. Once you see the green start to poke through the top of the soil, that's when I start using my lights. And I have my lights on a timer. They are 16 hours on eight hours off. Let's go downstairs and check on the corms that I've started over the past few weeks and see what stages they're at because they're all in different stages. Let's head downstairs. Okay, behind me we have some of the trays that grandpa started the other day. I am just starting to see, not okay, the top ones I did. The lower ones are the ones that grandpa did. But you can see the top ones that I did about three days before grandpa was here are starting to get the green to pop up one of my favorite things to see is when corms come to life because corms, I mean, I wanted to make a video this winter and I'm probably going to make one next, <laughs> next year because it's such a, it's a good idea and I don't want it to go to waste. Um, I wanted to write a song about corms that said, I'm not dead, I'm dormant. And that was going to be the title of the video. And I was going to make a music video. I'm not dead, I'm dormant. Anyway, that still might happen. Don't steal my idea, please. I know it's a million dollar song. Okay, so these are where the lights are still off. I probably should turn the light on. This is the violet ranunculus. You can see that the green is starting to poke up through. And if I were to pull that up, you'd see, I don't wanna, I hate doing it because sometimes doing this disturbs, but actually if I just peel away, you can see the root system starting to develop there. Stay where you are, lovely. And these look amazing. Violet was the one color I didn't have a lot of last year. I'm really excited about that color. All right, turn your attention now to where the lights are bright. This is the anemones, and I started those about two weeks ago. All right, you can see here, you can see clearly now the corms have grown. <laughs> Wow, look at these ones back here. They're incredible. Now, I do say there are a couple of varieties that I think I have duds. I think I have duds. I've got to contact my supplier. They have been sitting in the trays for a couple of weeks now and they're not doing anything. As you can see, these ones are doing amazingly. Let me just tap the back to focus on those ones back there. These ones are amazing. I just kicked something. These are the Galilee Whites. And the ones that I showed you earlier right here, these ones are, let's see, the Carmel Pastel ones. That's amazing. The ones that I sold on the internet, guys, I kept some of those. Let me just um, zoom out. Whoop. These ones right here are the ones that I sold. These are the, these are the Rarity Mistral Plus. Come on, light, be, be kind to me. These are all doing fantastically. And don't get a little, hold on, let me, let me get down here. Hello. Don't get a little, I guess, discouraged if your anemones start to get leggy because the stems, the flowers, are not growing on these leaves. These are just the very first green that it puts out. Eventually, the stems, are going to come from the corm itself underneath. So if these get long on you, that's okay. It's not a big deal. That's not where your flowers are coming from. Your anemone corm will start to produce more and more and more and more from the corm itself, okay? And then honestly, the, a lot of times I see these first, these first green, these first leaves, they will actually freeze and die and then new ones will come. If you start to see your plants getting a little luggy, it's really not a big deal. But unfortunately, this entire tray right here started at the same time, there's nothing in it. And these are the Marianne Blues, and I've talked with a couple of other growers. Um, they're just rotting, they're squishy, they're not good, and they've been exposed to the exact same um, conditions as all of the other ones that are thriving. And I talked to some other large-scale growers who had tens of thousands of corms go bad on them. So that's something that does happen 
Um, you just have to contact your broker who you bought the crumbs from. I've sacrificed for the greater good. This. This is a corm. The roots are growing fantastically, obviously right down through the soil, and they will start to grow the green up top. This one hasn't done it yet, but this, that's amazing to see. So if you see a corm like this and nothing's happening on top, rest assured something may be happening in darker waters. I have another six. Uh, these are ones that Grandpa did the other day. I'm actually starting to see a little bit of life. I'm telling you, this was like three days ago. Yup. Grandpa started this three days ago and there's already green coming up right here. Oh, and right here. Who are you? Picote Mix Overachiever. Maybe Grandpa has the magic touch. I gotta text him and tell him. A couple other things I wanna show you. Oh, I started a whole tray of stock. Let's go over there. Okay, sorry. Okay, this is really not, my grow room's not set up for viewing yet. This stock that I'm about to show you, I started an entire channel tray of double white stock. This is stock that is said to have a 90% double. And honestly, just by looking at the seedlings, I think it's right. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna put it probably on the ground so you guys can see this better. <gasps> they look so stinking good. Okay, this is on my basement floor. Can you see you guys? They all look like doubles to me. Uh, not all of them, obviously not all of them, but the majority of them look like a double stock seedling. And look at the germination on that. That is just amazing. <laughs> obviously, I'm gonna have to pop these up, which is gonna be a task, but that's why I have my helpers. I also wanted to show you guys something else that is looking amazing. Okay, these are some of the Come on, light. These are some of the Campanula babies that were dying in the hoop house. They had been left out there unwatered and unattended to for six to eight weeks. I can't remember exactly, but they are thriving down here and I'm gonna be getting these in the hoop house. My plan is about two weeks from now, mid-February, to get them out there. I'm excited. I have one, two, three, four, five, six trays that look just like this. They look so, so good. Oh, there might be more than six trays, to be honest with you, because there's even more. There's one right there as well. Look at them all. They look marvelous. Let's get a close up. Look at them. Oh my goodness. And those are some updates and a visit with Grandpa. Always a good. There's actually some, some bloopers of Grandpa at the end. <laughs> anyway, guys, I wanted to show you some updates and just give you a quick tutorial of my Ranunculus NNM. I start them both the same exact way. It's been successful in years past. When I say years past, I mean last year it was a huge success and I'm crossing my fingers that things are gonna go well again this year. It took me years to get ranunculus down. And honestly, it took me years in a hoop house because my weather, my zone 4B, upstate New York, I can't plant them in the fall like so many other growers can south of me in warmer climates than me. I can't do that. So in order for me to be successful, I need to get it in the ground late enough in the winter that it's not going to be killed from a deep freeze. Like next weekend, we have a low of negative 19. I can't have ranunculus outside then. It would just not do well. So if you look, there are some weather database websites that you can look up for your typical high and low for certain months of the year. And if you look in March, my low, my average low and my average high is perfect for me to get ranunculus in the ground undercover, which is inside the hoop house for me. Okay, I am gonna go upstairs into the garage and I'm probably gonna start some more seeds, guys, so I'll bring you along with that another time. Thanks for sticking around, we'll see you soon. Every time I make a video down here, I have a million questions about where I got all of my supplies. I have this in a bunch of videos. There'll be links to everything that's in this room. The only thing I don't have links for um, are the grow shelving units because guys, I just got these at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, they change year to year. I got different colors, like these ones are a silver, these ones are a charcoal, uh, but they're basically the same. But you don't really need this heavy duty of a shelving unit either. I just opted for it because I've had other ones break on me before. But I'll put some options in the description of this video. Not my broom though, I don't have a link for that, but guys, I make a mess down here. The soil is always being tossed about. 
I need to sweep. A lot of it's still from last year. But good news so far, guys, I don't have any fungus gnats down here. I've got to get my yellow sticky tapes out, though, and hang them just in case. I'll put a link to those in the bottom as well. I also have a brand new mister. It's a mister, mister, mister. I love it so much. I'll put a link to that below. Lots of things that I use. But you know what? A lot of the things that I use, I'll show you right here. I've recycled them. Stacks of my styrofoam. I mean, meat sometimes doesn't come in styrofoam anymore. But if you go to your grocery store and you're bringing home um, produce or meat in these packages, save them. They're perfect for soil blocking. But I do have trays and my trays are very important to me. And when I say I have trays, they're cafeteria trays and they fit an amazing amount of soil blocks on them. Uh, so yeah, I'll link everything. Here's a tray. I love this tray. It's just a cafeteria tray. Last year, it looks like I started rocket mix snaps on January 22nd. I should probably start some snapdragons, huh? <laughs> yeah, I better get on that. All right, anything I have down here that's usable, that my heat mats, all that stuff, I'll put a link in the description below. So. Happy seed starting. We'll see you soon. Yep, I've been saying for three years now that I need better lighting down here. I just need to bite the bullet. Red's just not my color. Three, two. Not a good look. I'm putting him in here upside down. With the legs down? Yeah, and yeah. it just doesn't seem right to me. But I am not the knowledge. Just think of them like little dancers. Their legs are dangling. <laughs> Standing on their heads. <laughs> If the ocean was liquor and I was a duck, why well, I'd swim to the bottom and never come up. <laughs> <laughs>